I believe we're live. We are live. I should stop. Uh, I'm going to have anyone there, but first of all, um, hello, welcome. Uh, it's Colin Cambria. Hello, Afrosa Colin Cambria. Um, if you're here to uh, to find about animal, animal management, you're on the wrong one, unfortunately. <laughs> um, we're going to talk today about education and the Child Studies degrees. Um, but to start with, though, I think we'll play a short video of the Cambria, some of the Cambria HG provision. That's okay. So hopefully that'll come. Could be larger than life, bigger than the world. Living out the hopes and dreams of every boy and every girl. You could fly higher than the sky, shine brighter than the stars. You could have all you ever wanted. Shoot the moon and reach for Mars. You know you do. Larger, larger than, bigger, bigger than. Could be larger than life, bigger than the world. Living out the hopes and dreams of every boy and every girl. And you can fly higher than the sky, shine brighter than the stars. You be that boy you ever wanted. You know you Still, still dancing for that one. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Um, we're going to uh, also go through the program today, and we've got some slides. Um, the reason for the slides really is to make it a bit more interactive for you. Um, as we go along, um, we'll hopefully answer any questions you've got. Uh, if you do have any questions, and I'm sure I don't myself or, or Josh on the screen, remember, but please um, send any questions um, through the device you've got, and we'll answer them now, or do our very best to answer them now. Or even at a later date if we have to. Um, so can we go on to the slides first? Joss, have you had that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can you go on to the second one then for me, Joss? All right. And we'll just have a look through what we're going to cover to start with. So hopefully it's going to meet what you're after. Here we go. So a sort of a, a, a plan really. Um, first of all, we'll introduce ourselves in a moment. Um, then we'll go through different pathways. So you know what you can choose, the options you have. Um, my colleague Joss on the screen, she'll go a bit more through the careers as well. So, you know, you get your qualification, you invest this time, uh, this money, and what are the options for you? Uh, we'll have a look at some of the facilities, or I'll talk about some of the facilities and certainly the coffee shop, which is important. Uh, we'll look at some of the modules in year one and the second year as well. Uh, so two years if you're doing a foundation degree. And also you may opt to do the full BA, be honest, and do a third, uh, third year, an extra year, so three years. Uh, we'll have a look at that. And then any frequently asked questions. We do have a list of um, quite a few questions we get off, asked quite often. So we've put some of them up there already. Um, if, again, as I said before, if you've got some questions, then please um, fire ahead. George, do you want to go first? Do you want to talk back? I shall introduce myself first. Yes, this is one of my official photographs. Um, so I'm a HE lecturer and programme lead for childhood studies, so I would be your personal tutor. Um, my background uh, as an expert and a practitioner is um, starting life as a primary teacher and moving into deputy headship. I also um, led a lot of different subjects and areas, but one of those that would be directly related to the degree is the initial teacher education and graduate teacher program leads. Um, after being a primary teacher, I moved into being an FE lecturer, so in the college, and then at the same time assessing childcare and health and social care. And then my qualification started off with a, a degree, then I did my primary PGCE, um, I did a master's in education, the teacher training for higher education, and I'm also a um, higher education academy fellow. Uh, my research, my sort of specialisms are looking at early years, the, the principles and practice, but also um, 
looking at mental health and emotional well-being for young children, psychology and the theories that are related to that, looking at research methods, how we collect data, what we do with it. And then um, I have a little penchant for um, academic skills as well. Um, I'm studying for um, an education doctorate at the moment. So over to Gary. Um, thank you, Josh. Um, yeah, background's quite similar to Josh, really. Um, I started working at College Canberra about five years ago um, as uh, one of the tutors, a program lead at the time for the PGC or the PSET program, uh, teacher training. Um, I still deliver on that now, I don't lead that now. Um, what I now do is I, I lead on the education degree. Um, my background is very much primary, uh, so I, I taught in primary schools for about 20 years. Um, a little bit different actually because I taught um, from uh, nursery, um, which is fun, to uh, to year six. I then moved up to management uh, as deputy head and eventually became a head teacher for about five or six years, I think. Um, work as a head teacher, I did a lot of work for the local authority, uh, some for GWARE as well, doing some training, supporting head teachers, mentoring. Uh, and I enjoyed that. And I had a career change, came to College Cambria. Um, um, and yes, at Cambria said, you know, I'm a program leader for the education degree, teach on the, the, the teacher training programs. Um, and I also deliver lots of training on things like behavior management across the different sites as well. Um, my qualifications, the letters after my name, after my daughter say as well. So um, yeah, be at honors, so PGC, leader management, MPH, uh, PGC, CHE and fellowship. Um, as for sort of academic research, I'm I'm actually in the middle of writing my first academic book, so that's my, my challenge at the moment. Um, you'll see on the screen here as well, both myself and Joss have a background in primary education. There are other people on our team who deliver as well. Um, um, one colleague, uh, Nick, um, who specialises in secondary education, so we do have specialists in different areas. And so although it's myself and Joss predominantly taking most of the lectures and seminars, we have other people coming in, particularly sort of Nick with his secondary um, who deliver extra things as well for us. Should we move on, Joss? Um, okay, the um, the pathway, so what you can choose really, options really, um, we have, there are almost two routes, uh, one as in education, one as in childhood studies. Um, I'm going to start with on the left, so start with uh, the foundation degree. So you can do a foundation degree in education, and in brackets you've got ALN stroke SCN. Really important that, because um, we are on the border, um, so within Wales, uh, now frequently called additional learning needs, whereas in England, uh, special educational needs. We focus on education, um, but specialise really in additional learning needs or special educational needs. The terminology isn't particularly sort of key, although there's a difference in England and Wales. Um, the key thing is that we cover what happens in England and what also happens in Wales as well, uh, which is really important. So you can, you can do your foundation degree in education and it's specialised in ALN. That takes two years. Um, there's three passes, because um, everyone will pass, we ensure that. Uh, you put the work in the pass. So there's a pass, a merit or a distinction. Um, you can then choose to progress. You can do an extra year. You can top up to do a full BA. Um, and again, you get a pass, sorry, a first, second, sorry, or um, a third class degree. Um, and then on the child of studies, again, you've got some of the education. So you've got the foundation degree in child of studies, again, two years, pass merit distinction. You can then top up for an extra year to do your full BA, or you can go straight in to do a BA uh, three years, and again, uh, getting your first, your second, or your third class. Uh, we have actually just had um, our students successfully completing their, um, so if any of them are live now or listening, uh, congratulations, some fantastic results. Uh, and so many students getting firsts, two ones and firsts. So, um, so yes, yeah, so brilliant students. Well then, Josh. Ah, sorry. Okay. So yes. Um, so on here, uh, my colleague Josh has put these on for you. These are the codes, uh, the program codes. So for any application forms, etc. So you know which one you'd be applying for. Um, it is important you choose the correct one. Um, there is a, is a possibility uh, if it's if you're not quite sure to discuss that with us in in September, but you'd still need to choose one now. So you can move, but you'd need to do that very very quickly though. So um, so yeah. So um, I'm passing on really once you've completed your foundation degree or your full degree. Um, it's looking at uh, careers. 
So we always say work backwards. What are you interested in? And then work backwards as to how will that look in employment terms. So from our experiences, we've we've got students who have worked with very young children and their families, or they've been progressing within their own employment, or they wanted to work with older children and work in schools. So we've just put a few things together very, very short. Um, so there are organisations that will definitely um, lead from education and from childhood studies, such as Children in Wales support programmes, um, Flying Start is for families and children in the early years, Action for Children covers early years, families and uh, young people. And again, these are all organisations that uh, you could go into with your either of your degrees. Save the Family is another organisation that is very local to um, Decide site for College Cambria. There's also um, working in projects and programmes, whether it's school, after school club, whether it's um, family support or young person support. Um, there are some programmes that are very specific to early years that might be in the home as this image shows us, or it might be within the school. The degrees will, will take you also on to primary teaching. Um, Gary mentioned about, we've got a colleague who has a secondary experience. We, we know that unless you have a degree already in a subject that's taught at secondary, that is very, very difficult to go directly from our degree to a PGC in secondary education. So if you're looking for secondary, you need to go to a different degree course. Um, but that also uh, doesn't rule out the fact that you can work in a vocational capacity. So childhood studies, education will lead to post compulsory teaching, which is your, your colleges, um, training centres, um, vocational uh, providers. And then there's also progression. This is the progression that's expected in Wales, that um, teaching assistants will then go through different um, courses and specialise then in their teaching. So those are just a few. There are a lot more than that. Um, the building. So the image there shows you uh, the actual building you'd be in. So this is at our D-side site. Um, Unfortunately, the sun isn't always shining. Uh, we try, but um, but yeah, it's actually a lovely building. Um, quite a small building. Um, our group size is a little bit smaller than you'll tend to have at the universities. Um, I, I sometimes guest speak at some of the universities and you can have maybe 100, uh, 100 200 people. Um, our group sizes tend to vary from sort of 10 to maybe sort of 20-ish. Um, actually, I like that um, our, our style tends to be um, lots of, sort of discussions. Um, the rooms in, inside the building here, you can get up to about sort of 30 people in, in the room. Um, the building's nice as well. Um, the sort of things there, uh, a kitchen facility, uh, really important things like teas and coffees and uh, putting your food and your lunches. Um, the, the course itself, I digress a little bit, but um, uh, or the course, the program is run over one day a week. So, and it's one very busy day. So students do tend to bring in their sort of lunch, snacks, uh, drinks and obviously there's a fridge the microwave facility um there's a sort of common room a place to have your food in there as well uh, i look at a list of things i've got a huge list here but um things like uh we use uh, chromebooks are available for students uh, to use it's not far from student services it's not far from the library um it's not far from uh, the coffee shop as well which i said before <laughs> coffee is really important as well um we're actually a really nice and a modern building a nice feel to the building as well the other thing with with this building is uh, my own office, uh, which I share with Joss, poor Joss, uh, and Nick and the colleague and I, but the office is <laughs> in this building here. Um, so we do tend to, it's quite easy for students to access this. So um, quite often we keep that sort of door open uh, and students can sometimes pop in um, and we see them as often as possible. So I think because we, we have smaller groups, I think quite a sort of close relationship with the students uh, and that smaller sort of building facilitates that as well. So, um, but yeah, a really nice building. Um, um, yeah, Joss. 
So uh, what will you be studying in that lovely building? And it is it is a very nice building, I agree. Is um, in your first year, depending on which route you take, your first semester will be the same as each other. So you'll be mixed together um, for travel studies and for education. So we have a policies and issues in education module, which is underpins everything that early childhood, childhood and education will be looking at. It's where do we stand right from the very beginning with policies and what are some of the challenges? Um, key skills will will be supporting you to do all your assessments. And so we'll give you the skills to do that. And then the other one in, in your first semester is children's development and learning, because we need to know where children start from to be able to support them as they grow older. Um, and semester two, we then split and we're very much then specific to our pathways. So for childhood studies, we're specifically looking at um, play and learning in the early years, leading into um, early years in school settings. We're looking at language development. How do we support speak, speaking and listening? And then later on, looking at reading. And also, um, what are the partnerships that we have from a very early stage, starting with the midwives that are looking after mums, they're looking at health visitors that are looking after mums and dads and aunts and uncles and whoever else in the family. So that leads you um, very much across the border to England as well as to Wales. Um, and then we progress then on to year two that Gary's going to chat about now. Okay, so a very similar format really to you, obviously with different modules again, so you've got your two pathways. Um, I'm not going to go into the modules in, in depth, I think it's more important that you have that overview of the first year. Um, what you do have though is sometimes there are, uh, some of the modules are just for the child studies, some are just for the education group. And then for example, I'm seeing here now the safeguarding, which is obviously key as a child section safeguarding, and that's covered across obviously by um, uh, both uh, groups, or both the routes follow that as well. Um, there tends to be sort of three, there's obviously four there, but three or four modules in that semester as well. Um, but what we do though, and I mentioned a little bit earlier on as well, is that those modules in semester one, so you've got um, that four there under child studies, and there's obviously four in education. Um, those uh, modules, we cover those in that day. So what you have is a very busy day. Um, so you've got a number of hours on one module, we have a break, then another module. Hence, I go back to coffee, you wonder why. Um, but yeah, <laughs> lots of breaks in between. But it is that heavy day. So we deliver the program, uh, we deliver the content over the day. Um, and, and one of the advantages, I think, of, of the program really is that we tend to find that many of our um, students are already working part time um, and, and fantastic. Um, However, although it is a day of delivery, there is still additional time that you need yourself, uh, for obviously writing your assignments and doing your research or some placements. But, um, but I think that's one of the real strengths of the course, as well as, well as small group sizes, in that um, it's delivered over one day. Um, so yeah, so again, the only thing I'm gonna highlight on here is one of the modules, uh, the Working with Children module, which you can see part one and part two. You may be wondering why the four modules in the first semester. Uh, and three in a second. That uh, working with children is actually split. So we, we, we run it um, sort of long and thin over uh, both semesters as well. So uh, I'm not going to go any more detail, I don't think, Josh. So uh, no. if you have any questions, we go through. Um, the other thing, sorry, before we move on, is all the modules here as well. Each module has a module handbook. Um, so everything regarding the module, what we're covering each week, all the assignments, the marking rubrics, all that is given to you at the very start of the year. Um, okay. Um, I just like to point out that I have made a mistake and it says year two charter studies and the other one says year one education. It's not, it's year two. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I will tell everybody I can't proofread my own work. Okay. <laughs> but um, all right, I'm going to check this one now again. So what happens if you've gone down the um, foundation degree, the FDA, that means that you've done the education pathway or you've chosen the FDA for childhood studies and not the BA. If you're BA, you just carry on as you go into your third year. 
But um, if you've done the foundation degree, you then have choices. So you can graduate with a full um, foundation degree or you can top up to a final year to get your BA honours full degree. Um, and there's also a bit of a bonus because we have um, very strong links with Aberystwyth, who is our qualifying university. So Aberystwyth University have also said that you can transfer to Aberystwyth for your final year if you want to. So you might want to do two years um, up here in North Wales and then you want to try going on to live on a university campus down at Aberystwyth in mid Wales for your final year. So that is an option for you as well. Um, the other thing that um, I know Gary has mentioned um, to me today is that because we have close ties with Aberystwyth University, they have set up a, um, a joint project and they deliver a primary stroke secondary PGCE. You are automatically offered an interview for that um, so that it, it's you don't have to go through that first stage of does my application get me an interview? So you get an automatic interview. The school's um, information is on the Aberystwyth University website if you look at PGCE. So I won't go into any more details about that, but that's, that's another um, advantage of being at a um, sort of in between a college that is graded as excellent for our teaching and learning. It's um, a good and uh, Aberystwyth University, which is student experience, is at the top level gold level. So with your slap bang in the middle of best of both worlds. So that leads us on to um, frequently asked questions. But we've also um, if you've got any questions that you want us to answer live, then please just type in and we'll answer those as they, they come up. So I'm going to hand over to, to Gary for um, the first question. And I'll do the second question and, and so on. OK, um, yes, yeah, so the first one, quite sort of common question, uh, the qualifications, uh, you know, what you've got already uh, and the entry requirements. Um, the process is very much done by, um, by Aberystwyth. Um, what I can say, though, is that for students, um, they tend to look for a GCSE, uh, a C grade in English. Um, that's really preferred. Ideally, also a level three qual uh, relating to child studies and education, um, and obviously A levels as well. Mature students uh, are a little bit different. Uh, for mature student, they're, they're looking really: have you got any experience, uh, professional experience in a sort of area as well? And that's very much on you know through an interview process they have with you. They would see what you have, uh, where you're up to, what, you, what you've done, and whether it would be suitable for you as well. So. Um, it's not quite a black and white, um, it depends on individuals really as well. So what is important though to bear in mind though is if you're looking at you know, the entry requirements, if you then decide that you want to go into to teaching, um, so top up, so you could do your, uh, you get your degree, you could do your three years and then you decide you want to do a PGC afterwards. Um, to get that PGC, to go on to the, the PGC though, to get into the teacher training, this is something I deliver myself, um, you're looking really at that C grade um, as a minimum, but C grade in English, math, science or equivalents. And ideally, um, many, um, many universities and also I know myself as a head teacher, I, I was looking for people who possibly got a B grade really rather than the C as well. So so that's something to bear in mind as in the next step as well. Yeah. Um, and that that kind of um links to a couple of other questions, but we'll do them in order. So um, do I need a placement and what will it entail? Well, um, our, in our first year, we have um, 50 hours of placement equivalent. And that is really to support you in writing your assignments because you're going to be focusing your assignments on uh, what you read. But if you're what you're reading, you don't understand what it looks like in practice and it can be quite tricky. So um, particularly towards the end of your, your first semester, we'd be expecting you to have built up that, um, that practical knowledge, either through your existing employment or through volunteering. 
Um, in the second year, it's expected on a regular basis throughout the year, again, so that you can um, build a portfolio of evidence, which is one of the last assignments that you'll be submitting in at the end of your year two. Good question. Before I make a mistake, and I probably will, I'm just going to check with Joss. We're all Wednesday, aren't we, Joss? We're... We are a Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. So the timetable will be on a Wednesday then. So, so all first year starting off will be on a Wednesday, and it would stay on a Wednesday for your uh, the second year, and if you top up to do the full BA your third year, it will also be on the Wednesday. Uh, so we have different groups on a different day. So, so I said a Wednesday. Um, now, I have said before that it's um, we cover all those modules in the day, so basically three modules pretty much in the day. Um, the timetable varies slightly. Um, each module uh, will have three hours on it, um, and that three hours will be split depending on the module, depending on the tutor, depending on the group really as well. Um, so we tend to have sort of a lecture, um, but that lecture is very much interactive or as interactive as possible, uh, not just about, if I, if I go back, a few decades when I was at university, and me sat in the auditorium being quiet for a long time. Um, not necessarily that. We do have a lot of discussions, we break it up. But we have a lecture and we have a seminar. And that lecture and seminar, when it's combined, it is uh, we look at three hours. Within that, though, it's not just three hours straight. So we have, uh, there may be an hour and a short break. We may have another hour. We may have one break in between. We break that up depending on the group and the needs and, and what we're covering as well. Um, so you'll tend to be in a very, very roughly, so let's say that three hours, so we start at nine, so nine till 12, maybe have a break, or sorry, yes, definitely have a break, sorry, a lunch break <laughs> and a cup of coffee, uh, then maybe uh, one till four, and then sort of five to eight. So we do tend to uh, have an evening, it varies in some years, but it does tend to be a sort of a later finish. Um, and because we deliver so much content, we listen very much to students, so we've got content to get through, but it depends on the discussions as well. But it is a, a very busy day. Um, I think that's yeah. I think that covers it. And that ties in that that timetable day ties in with what you do outside of uni because um, from the beginning you will start looking at your assignments, and those assignments um, will come in thick and fast as you start your first semester. So the first ones tend to be um, much shorter give you um, a little bit of academic skills kind of um, experiences. So you're going to be going away with your notes and saying, right, how does this link to my assignment? And what else do I need to read about? What did I understand? What did I not? So we're expecting in your first semester in your first year for you to be doing at least 10 to 15 hours of extra reading and writing um, towards assignments and that's each week now if you split that over the week um, if you did five days it's it's sort of two to three hours or between two and three hours of um, extra study that you do over five days one day at uni that's six days and then a day of rest whichever that might be um, and that then gives you enough time to ask us any questions if you're not quite sure about something before you have to submit an assignment or get into the next week where we start a new topic. So um, that is that is one of the things about the timetables. So Gary is going to just talk to you about some of the costs now. Um, I'm up to DBS first. Okay. We'll just cover the DBS first. So um, uh, disposal and borrowing service, um, so do you need a DBS check? Yes, um, but not something to worry about. That's something we will uh, sort out with you in the first few weeks. Um, obviously, some of the, um, because of the nature of the work, uh, some of the assignments, and also some placements, which we'll cover as well, um, involves working with um, uh, children. Um, so that DBS is sorted for you. But uh, within the first sort of two weeks, really, we, we tell you what you need to do. and it, It's done through Colour Canberra. Um, you do need to be proactive actually get that done though because uh, you would not you would not be able to secure a placement without that but it's nothing to worry about now that's something we put in place um, when you start with us John, and it's some, free it's free because you've already paid for your degree delivery so you won't have to pay for an extra DBS 
um, check through through Cambria. But the degree is nine thousand pounds per year for the actual course fees. And what most people do is they'll um, apply through Student Finance Wales. The sooner that you um, apply for the degrees, um, the sooner you can then do your Student Finance Wales or Student Finance England, depending which side of the border you're on. And um, in Wales, that's usually a loan that you would then pay back after you've completed your full degree but also if you are earning over something like £24,000 a year, and then they take that out of your salary straight away. So it comes out something like £30 a month um, if you're earning £24,000. So £24 a month is it's not bad, really, for getting a, a full degree while you're living in the area and coming from to a top college that's linked with a top university in Wales. So that would be the cost. The other costs really are books. And um, I always, always go to Amazon and eBay to look at which, which books I really, really need. If I can uh, get a newer edition, fine. But um, I've got quite a few books that have cost me a couple of pounds. Um, I've got one here actually. That cost me three pound fifty <laughs> through the post. So, um, where do I study the degree? Uh, if I answer that one, Gary, and then if you have a look at how uni look, um, your degree will be at D side site. Uh, it's not across to Wrexham, so you will need to have transport to get you to Deeside. But there are buses and trains, um, and we can um, our student services will be able to give you more idea of routes and things like that. Uh, just before I go on to sort of September and what that looked like, um, just mentioned about sort of the cost and that as well. Um, Cambridge actually also have some really good uh, resources in terms of journal access. Uh, which is free for you. Um, so obviously, yes, use use the books as we mentioned, and we will give you a reading list. Um, but also, certainly for, for very much sort of up to date sort of research as well, we really encourage you. Uh, it's essential that you are accessing journals. Um, as I said, you know, you have access to that through all um, as a student, sorry, College Cambria. And um, you can also actually use the other sites. Although we deliver at the B side sites, um, you can access the sites or like the library, for example, in um, in Wrexham and the Yale site as well. Um, so what will you look like in September? Um, I've been asked that question lots and um, it's very hard to answer it, to be honest, because it depends how we are uh, in terms of the COVID-19. Um, what I can say is that it depends on what the, it is like nationally, what we're allowed to do. Um, but we are in a position where we can deliver sort of blended learning. So what I mean by that is we could be in a situation where we can deliver face to face. We could deliver it all online. Or we could do a blended approach where um, everything can be accessed online, but there's also opportunity for face to face as well. It's also important to remember that everyone will be in a different situation um, when we come to sort of September, October, uh, in terms of what they're comfortable with, in terms of whether they're shielded, um, you know, whether they're, they're caring for someone, and that as well. I think the best way to answer the question, rather than go around in circles, is that it depends what your needs are. Um, I, I envisage um, that, uh, as I said before, everything will access online. So you can, uh, when it's access online, there'll be interactive teaching, interactive learning, yeah. group discussions online. Not a case of you listening to something pre-recorded. Um, what we all do is best practice. Um, and we're in a position, because we use that technology already, um, to do that. If yeah. you're not able to access a, a, a session live there and then, well, that would be recorded. So. And also, if, if you rather face to face, uh, which is something I tend to like, um, rather than like this, when I can't see anybody. Um, but the opportunity for that as well. So, so please don't worry about what it'll look like in September. Um, yes, we'll be running, um, but it won't just be a recorded. There will be that interaction, whether it's with people um, or it's online as well. Yeah, uh, it is. It gets very boring if you're just listening to somebody's voice that's pre-recorded. <laughs> um, 
and that, you know I mean that links into the um, how it's going to be assessed as well that's another question that comes up is um, we in our first year and our second year we have um, a mixture of what we call reports um, everything we always say everything in your first year has got to come from what you've read so everything is about those key skills that you start off with so in your first year there'll be um, for key skills there's uh, a, an online test about referencing um, there's a, a group poster to create um, in your um, second year there are presentations so you create a presentation and then you deliver it and what we've done you know what will it look like in September end of September beginning of October is that you can actually share your presentation with everybody else through um, we use Google um, as a college um, University of Aberystwyth they use Blackboard and they use Panopto to record everything. So those those sorts of things um, will go hand in hand with your essays, your complete essay writing. So I'm I'm just wondering if we've got uh, any other questions or things that have come up, Gary, at all. If you have a question, obviously you're welcome to send that question in. Um, and whether it's now or whether you're watching this recorded as well, um, you can send it at a later date. That's fine. We'll come back to you. And if you are looking uh, to apply, you don't know, you don't need to apply through UCAS. That's the beauty of it. You don't need to spend 20 something pounds for, for applications. What you do is you go on to the Colour Cambria website. You look for the HE um courses click on the courses and it'll tell you how to apply or you can ring the college itself so we look forward to your applications and we look forward even more to seeing you at the end of september for your induction to your degree at Deeside site and then we'll look forward to seeing you at the end of three years with your full degree at graduation Thank you. Yeah, no.